After a few uncharacteristic wet winters, it's been a nice change to get our cool dry season with the bright blue skies back. It has been very dry though, so it will be nice to get some rain, which is forecast for next week. It's only a few months since we've started getting back into the garden after neglecting it for over 18 months, but things are really starting to take off again. In our front garden, we have seven metal raised garden beds. This garden gets the best sunshine in our yard in the winter months, but it borders on a little bit too much during summer, which is a problem for our climate here in subtropical Australia. We did manage to get our garlic in back in March. This is a subtropical variety called Glen Large. It's the only variety that I've had success with here. I source organic bulbs for our seed shop from a Queensland farmer. If you want some for next year, make sure you're on the wait list as they sell out quite quickly. As these are a subtropical variety, they grow much quicker than other standard varieties. You'll probably see a lot of people not harvesting until November, but with our March planting, we'll expect harvest in early September. I've stopped watering them for now, and I'll just wait until half of their leaves dry off before we harvest. As you can see, a few have already started to brown. If you leave them to fully dry out, the cloves will separate and snap off, which just makes it harder for them to store. We had a few days of crazy wind back in the middle of July, which really affected our snow peas, although it could just be the natural end for them. I was starting to manage the powdery mildew with a milk spray, but gave up as the kids are so sick of eating them anyway. I'll probably pull these out at the same time as the garlic, if not beforehand. The plan is to plant some suya long cucumbers and some climbing beans on this arch when they are done. The other big garden bed I planted here in June. I had a lot of trouble with this bed as something kept eating everything overnight. Not even eating the entire plant, but just snipping the seedlings off at the soil base. I ended up using some diametaceous earth around the new seedlings that seemed to stop the problem. I had suspicions that it was a native cockroach, but I also did find some curl grubs in this bed too. In here, I do have some broccoli and lots of greens. There is also some beetroot, which I'm surprised to see is starting to bulb up as I didn't consider the shade from the snow peas when I planted them here. I'll make a note for next winter that this bed just needs to be mostly greens. This small bed has our sugar snap peas, another I planted in June when I decided to get back into the garden again. These are a variety called Cascadia and I find them the best for our climate. They say they are resistant to powdery mildew, but I don't think that means that they are immune. They just don't get as badly affected as some other varieties can get. This has been our best crop of sugar snaps in a long time. Normally, they don't make it back to the kitchen. I did have some lettuce in here that I was harvesting. It's now going to seed, so I'll let it do its thing until the sugar snaps are ready to come out too. There is also a sad looking YOLO Wonder capsicum which has given us a few fruit over the last month. I let them to fully ripen to red, which is rare that I let them do that, particularly in summer as it is a battle with fruit flies. In this little bed, I planted some extra garlic that I had left over from planting the big bed. They aren't doing as well, which is likely because I didn't do much in terms of soil preparation. I just shoved them in after I pulled out the sweet potatoes. This bed also gets a lot less sunshine, which I think is also a contributing factor. I've also got them sharing a bed with this Hungarian wax capsicum, which isn't loving the cool weather, but it should burst back to life when it starts to warm up again. Another bed that I sporadically planted in late June. I've got some golden beetroots here, purple potted peas, tatsoi, and some cauliflower. There is also a capsicum, and I threw in some of the garlic that I thought was no good, and of course it sprouted. Nasturtiums keep self-seeding in here, which I'm constantly pulling out, and I didn't do a lot of prep work with this bed, so I think that's the reason why the cauliflower is a little bit slow. Here is our last biennial bed, where I plant things that grow over a couple of years. I still have a ping tongue long eggplant still going, and we've been getting a few of those over the last month or so. I did have a capsicum plant growing in here and another eggplant, but I have pulled those out and replace them with cabbage back in June. This is a red acre cabbage, which grows quite compact. We're not huge cabbage eaters here, so these are the perfect size for us. I've also thrown in a few space fillers of rocket and pak choy as I trim the eggplant back a little bit and it opened up some space. 
Now the straw bale garden. I haven't done one of these in a little while. They are really great way to grow over the cooler months. They are really no good when it's too hot as they dry out so quickly. I love using them to figure out layout and I did that here to help me decide if I could easily get the wheelbarrow in and out of this area before I put in the new garden beds. I planted this out only a couple of weeks ago and we've got some dwarf blue kale growing, Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce, some Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard and some pak choy that self-seeded in the driveway and I relocated into the bale. The final raised bed in our front garden area is the one that we just planted last week. I'll link to the video that we just posted on planting this garden bed. But in here we have sown some cucumber, seeds, zucchini, bean, beetroot and carrots. The beans are mostly up, the cucumber is close, I can see a little glimpse of green. I also planted in some Swiss chard, rocket pak choy and lettuce seedlings. On the fence, it looks a bit messy, but I'm waiting for these seed pods to dry. This is a uh, ikama, apologies if I pronounce this wrong, but it's a Mexican potato. You eat the tubers and it grows as a vine. So the seeds and flowers are highly poisonous though, so I would not recommend in growing this if you've got livestock or even toddlers. I mostly grow it for the flowers as they are these brilliant purple colored flowers and they attract those big fat bumblebees. I've yet to harvest it and actually eat it, so I don't know what it tastes like. I don't know how to prepare it. It's just been re-sprouting every year. So if anyone has any tips on those, let me know in the comments below. I'll probably trim it back soon, but I'll have to untangle it from my passion fruit vine that is growing in between. I've been trying to use up a lot of my old seed and I had stacks of flower seeds. So I dumped them in all together and we made this little plot here to create a little wild flower bed and sprinkled them in. I'm not sure what kind of germination rate we'll have here because some of these seeds were almost a decade old, but hopefully something will come up. I have to show you one of my favorite things in the garden at the moment, and it is my fruit salad tree. It is a multi-grafted stone fruit tree, and we have three different types of fruit growing on this one tree, a nectarine, a peach, and a plum. I don't know the specific varieties of each graft, but they are low chill, which is what you need to look for in our climate. This is only the second year of it being in the ground. Last year, we had a few nectarines and heaps of plums. This year, I'm hoping we get some peaches too. I'm trying to keep it well trimmed so I can easily net the entire tree to avoid fruit fly. I know this is going to limit the amount of fruit it will produce, but I'd rather have a handful of fruit I can eat rather than a bucket load that is full of maggots. I use this flexi frame and as soon as the fruit has set, I throw an entire net over the tree. We will be getting loads of mulberries this year. We have two trees and normally I alternate between trimming them back as the year we trim them, we do get a lot less fruit. But I didn't do any trimming this year, so we'll likely have more than we can handle. This variety is supposed to be a dwarf variety, but they are huge. I thought perhaps the dwarf was in reference to the leaves as they seem a bit small, but that could also be just them trying to deal with our clay soil. The aquaponics, which is kind of a hydroponics at the moment as we don't have any fish in here. I do need to get some nutrients and give it a bit of attention as it's not doing much. We also need to do a big clean out of the growing media as it is full of gunk, which could be contributing to the fact that things aren't growing very well. We need to do this before we get new fish when it warms up. At the moment, I'm just using it to propagate cuttings and sprinkling in seeds that I think are out of date to see if they come up, which is a bit of a waste of space. Now to the back garden, which is looking a little drab. We're doing redoing this area and considering moving the aquaponics here. Out here, we initially did have the full raised beds plus a flower garden and some corner beds and the veg pot. The tree roots that are entering our garden beds have meant we've needed to convert into wicking beds. So we've already pulled down one timber bed that was eaten by white ants and put a wicking bed in its place. I'm in the process of setting up another one and I'm hoping to finish it up by the end of this month. I'm also thinking of moving my veg pod down to be level with the garden beds that are here and then lining it on the outside to make everything look the same. 
At the moment, the veg pod is struggling along. There's a few old strawberry plants that have seen better days and the chilies, which are due to be removed as they're about three years old. So I'm not sure how they're going to go producing fruit this year. This corner bed is mostly perennials like Brazilian spinach and the Madagascar climbing beans. Under the mulch, we have some asparagus, which is a few years old now. So we hopefully will get an all right harvest this year. I did throw in some chocos in here and they seem to be growing well already. I may regret that decision later. This fence bed here is a wicking bed and I've just filled it mostly with herbs. I have some plantain, which is great for rubbing on insect bites, some parsley and upland cress. There is also a creeping thyme, but it doesn't really seem that happy. I've never seemed to have any luck with creeping thyme. I always manage to kill it. I've also thrown in some flowers and there are some random cauliflower. This cauliflower might actually give us something, but I'm not going to hold my breath. There is also another asparagus in here as well, which is currently dormant. The July bed is going great. This is around five weeks of growth from planting out. I really think that that good compost has helped things all along because the broccoli at the front is nowhere near as established and as healthy looking as these ones. I've been harvesting loads of baby spinach. I trim the sides of the leaves mostly to stop them shading the root veggies. The radish are starting to bulb up, so they'll only be a week or so away. And I've already harvested a couple of full heads of lettuce. I've popped in some fast growing pak choy in their place, and I've also started to thin my carrots. I overplant carrots as low germination rate is a risk if you don't keep the moisture up to them. I thin them down to one plant every two centimeters. That first thinning, I just use scissors to snip them off. And then I thin again to five centimeters apart when they reach about baby carrot size. So I can get a harvest of baby carrots in that thinning process. All of the plants that I repotted last month are surprisingly going well. I do see a sprout on the bay tree, which honestly I thought was dead. The blueberries are really taking off though. I've got loads and loads of flowers. I need to make sure that I keep the water up with them so we get some decent sized berries this year. From our food forest area, we harvested loads of coffee beans this month and I've started the process. It's a long way to get from the coffee cherries to the roasted beans, which we have in our drink. We start with fermenting and then we dry, then we remove the outer shell and then we roast. We're yet to find a good way to home roast the beans. Um, we've got now got a couple of kilos of green beans sitting in our cupboard. My peppercorn vine isn't doing much right now. And we did move our vanilla bean pod here, but I'm not sure it loves this position. And it's, it's getting a little bit sunburnt, so I need to rethink where I put it. Anyway, that's it for our garden this month. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.